So one of the questions I get asked a lot is how do I mount the GoPros onto my bike? Where's the best positions, uh, either on your body or on your bike, to get the most dynamic footage? So what I'm going to do today is go through all the kit that I use, all the mounts that I use, and show you some examples of where you can put the mounts on the bike and what sort of effect it gives you. So in terms of where I mount them on the helmet and what I use, I use the, um, the GoPro mounts that come with uh, the GoPro kit, and you can also buy these separately, so one on the top there and one on the side. Um, you can actually mount them horizontally or, um, or vertically, it doesn't really matter. Um, I've used the GoPro ones, and I've also used third-party ones which still have the 3M glue on them, um, and I haven't had a problem with it either. The 3M uh, kind of OEM um, or sort of third-party ones are actually quite a bit cheaper, so you can get those kind of things on Amazon. I'm going to stick a link in the um, description below so you can have a look uh, and see where, where I got them from. In terms, of the, in terms of the positioning on there, basically um, there's two main positions that I like to use on a helmet. The first one is, um, is the side, and you'll see me using that quite a lot. This gives quite a nice, um, a nice perspective. It gives, it gives a good view of the front of the bike, gives a good view um, of the road and the surroundings, but it gives the, the side of the helmet is in the shot, and you get a little bit of kind of what I describe as context. So you can see that it's mounted on a motorcycle on someone's head. So when they're kind of, you know, when the camera moves side to side, when you're looking, it makes sense because you can see that it is actually bolted onto a helmet. Um, alternatively, I've used a mount uh, on the top. I'm not a massive fan of mounting on the top. Um, I just think it gives a bit of a dull um, look to the footage. And also, I found that it's actually a lot more, um, it's kind of further away from your neck, and therefore, it's a bit wobblier. So unless you've got, um, you're lucky enough to have one of the GoPro 6s, which has got built-in stabilization, I personally would stay away from mounting it on the top and either mount it on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Now, I know GoPro um, do actually a, a chin um, area mount for the GoPro. Um, because of, I've always had these kind of adventure type helmets, they have a grill there, so they don't actually have the facility to put a, um, a mount on there. So it's not something that I've tried. Now, in terms of the mounting hardware that I use for the bike, um, I use very few of the actual sort of GoPro um, stuff. In fact, for mostly for mounting onto the bike frame itself, I don't use any of the GoPro mounts. Um, I exclusively use these RAM mounts because I found them to be um, much stronger, um, a lot more kind of, um, a lot tougher and a lot more versatile in terms of where you can put them. So basically the RAM mounts that I use, uh, the system is based around these uh, one inch ball joints. So everything clamps onto a ball joint um, and you have these kind of universal adapters which uh, bolt onto there and then you have um, got one in my pocket. You've got the GoPro adapter here, which then goes into the end like that. Um, you can swizzle it around any way that you want. Okay, and then when, you've, when you're happy, you tighten it and that's really, really solid. It's not going anywhere. Then in terms of how you actually fit it to the bike, here you've got um, a clamp, basically. They do different sizes of these. This is, I think, is the medium size. You can get a bigger one than this. You can get a smaller one. This um, is a good size because it goes reasonably small, so it'll go around most of the frame areas of the bike. But um, it's actually big enough to go around the fork on most bikes. So um, as you'll see from the footage later on, I use um, uh, one of these mounted on the fork, and it gives a really nice view low down of the front wheel and the road. Um, really dynamic shot, really nice, um, and as I say, really easy to do with one of these. Um, so basically, you get, it, you get them all kind of put together, and then this just kind of winds up and clamps on. Really simple. Um, they come with different lengths, so as you can see here, we've got slightly longer ones. I think from memory, there's like three different lengths of them. Um, the really nice things about these uh, RAM mounts are, is that they're a kind of universal system. So I first came across them when I had a Garmin sat-nav and it used one of these to mount. So what you'll find is that they do mounts for normal cameras, for the little thread that you need to screw into a DSLR, for example, for um, sat-navs and all kinds of other things that you might want to attach to the bike. So they're a really good system to kind of have um, and to build up. So this is just a standard GoPro mount. It bolts onto here. Get it lined up. That goes through there screws up 
and there you go. And what I particularly like about them, as I say, is they're, they're more versatile than the GoPro mounts. So with the GoPro mounts, you tend to get movement either that way or that way. So you've got to get things lined up quite carefully. With these, because it's a ball mount, you can just angle it pretty much any way you want, which makes it really, really quick. You just clamp it onto the bike, swizzle it round, and kind of you can get it lined up exactly as you want. It's really, really quick. Um, and once, once it's on, it's really, really solid. Um, in terms of things like vibration on these, um, what I found is that the shorter, um, the shorter ones work slightly better. But as you'll see from some of the footage I'm going to show you later, a little bit of vibration isn't bad. Um, it doesn't ruin the footage completely. It still makes it completely usable. Um, you just have to keep an eye on it. Now, in terms of the helmet mounts, I've also experimented with some of the other options available. So one is the 360. So I'm not talking about 360 as in VR. Um, 360. I'm talking about a, basically a long stalk which sits on the top of the helmet and swivels. So it's called a 360 swivel mount. There's several companies that make them. I've had, um, I've experimented a little bit with those. I took one to Morocco. Um, it's good fun and it gets some really interesting footage. They're not hugely practical. Um, you need quite a big weight on the back of the, uh, the rod and it's quite an, a sort of obtrusive thing to have stuck on your helmet. You don't want to be riding around for any length of time with it on. So it's kind of a specialist bit of equipment. Um, they're fun to use, but as I say, not hugely practical. So in terms of where you position them on the bike, um, obviously it's going to come down to personal preference and it's going to come down to the model of the bike. So I'm using a 1200 GS LC at the moment um, and there's quite a lot of options on it. So you've got kind of an, an area at the back um, where the top box goes on, you've got some frame um, areas where you can mount it to and you've also got the fork area and the handlebars. And so with your GoPro footage it's important to decide what you want to get out of it. If you just want to record a ride or a section of the ride um, you can mount it anywhere, it's not going to make a massive amount of difference. Stick it on your helmet, pointing forward, that's fine. If you want to make a film out of it and you want to kind of cut sections together, you don't want hours and hours of the same shot because it's going to get really, really boring. So that's when it's really good to vary the shot. Now what I recommend is when you do a fuel stop or when you do just a, you know, a quick break for a coffee, um, just have a look at where you've got the camera, put a new battery in, um, swap it somewhere else and try and keep the, the positions quite different. Some of the positions work really well kind of for a decent amount of time. That's your kind of what you could describe as your sort of A role. That could form the major part of your footage. Whether well, some of them are kind of more specialist shots that you're just going to want to flick to for um, a couple of seconds. So for those sorts of shots, it doesn't matter if you get a bit of vibration. As you can see with this shot here, you've got the kind of jello, um, we call it the jelly effect. Basically, there's a little bit of um, high frequency vibration going on. And the way the sensor works on the GoPro means that you get this kind of jello effect. Um, but actually, if you watch motorsport, if you watch Top Gear, if you watch the Grand Tour, you'll see this kind of um, thing in, in footage that they use. It's just a matter of choosing a clip and just using a small amount of it. Keeps the film looking really, really dynamic. And as I say, it means you don't have to worry about all the footage being perfect all the time. And the other thing that's really important is I don't think you have to be tied to reality. Now, what do I mean by that? If you've shot um, a section of uh, footage where you've got the camera facing forward, uh, you've got nice sweeping bends, if later on in the day you're not on those bends anymore, but you have some really nice footage of um, maybe a close-up of the, the wheel in the road or you've got the camera facing back towards you, it's fine to use a bit of that footage and cut back to it. As long as it makes sense, as long as one wasn't shot in the daytime, one wasn't shot at night and it's not going to be really obvious, then it's fine, I think, to cut shots like that in just to keep it more dynamic. 
Um, at the end of the day, it's only you and your mates that are going to know that you've, um, you've edited like that. Everyone else that's watching it is just going to think it's a dynamic and entertaining film. So in terms of actual cameras uh, that I use, you can see here I've got a couple. I use the um, GoPro Hero 4 Silver that I've had for quite a while. Uh, and this one I've just bought. This is the GoPro Hero 6. Um, this is a really, really impressive camera. I will caveat that by saying that GoPro have been having quite a lot of problems with it. Loads of users have reported them crashing um, and various issues with the footage. I've had a few problems, not loads. Um, I think uh, if you use it in nice, bright sunlight, I think it does a fantastic job. I've tried using it indoors and it's rubbish, so I wouldn't bother. Um, but the main thing about this is it shoots 4K um, 60 frames per second. Now, if you don't know what that means, the answer is you probably don't need that one. You'd probably be absolutely fine with one of the cheaper ones. So um, the GoPro 5, or as I say, the GoPro 4. Um, I use the GoPro 4 Silver as opposed to the GoPro 4 Black, mainly because it came with um, the GoPro 4 Silver came with an LCD um, back, which I find really, really useful. Uh, you can link them up to your smartphone. It's relatively easy to do. Um, as you'll see in the video, I actually have a quad lock system for mounting my iPhone 7 Plus on the handlebars. So that makes it quite useful if I'm monitoring some, the, the camera that's on my head or the camera that's on the, the bike. I can have a quick look um, and check that it's working, check that it's recording. Um, so that can be really useful. But you don't have to link them to your smartphone. It is a bit of a pain, especially if you're using more than one camera, because you've got to link and relink uh, to each one by Wi-Fi, and it's, it gets a bit annoying. Um, but as I say, these, uh, the GoPro 4 Hero 4 Silver um, is probably the cheapest one with a built-in screen. Um, and it does a good job. This does, in terms of resolution, this will do, um, I think, 30 frames per second at about 2.7K. So 4K being kind of this big, 2.7K being sort of this big, and standard HD being sort of this big. So it's still, you know, um, it's still really good quality. Now, in terms of settings on the camera, I'm not going to go into that uh, in great detail here because I'm going to do another video on that. But as a rule, um, the main thing that you have to worry about is the, um, the field of view. So that's the kind of the angle. Um, that's equivalent to sort of the, 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 how it's using the lens. So basically, um, you've normally got kind of super wide, which is like this wide. You've got wide, which is kind of this. And then medium, which is kind of closer to a sort of standard wide angle lens on a camera. Um, best thing to do is to experiment with that. I normally go for wide. It's kind of a good, um, it, it kind of sits in the middle of that super wide and, and, and the medium. It's quite a nice wide angle, but it's not ridiculous. It doesn't look like a fisheye, so it still works quite well. Um, and then in terms of um, the only other thing to be careful of is frame rate. Um, if you're using footage, if you're going to cut this in, um, edit this in with footage from your mobile phone, for example, you just want to make sure it matches. So, um, for example, iPhone shoots at 30 frames per second. There isn't really a way, unless you get third-party software, there isn't really a way to, um, to change that. So, ideally, you want to match your GoPro to that. So, you just set it to um, 30 frames per second. I think it's NTSC. Um, so, that's the kind of a, you know, American setting on it, and it'll work fine. And that means when you come to edit all the footage together, it's all going to work, and you're not going to have any problems. Now, one last important technical um, note with these, doesn't really relate to putting them onto the bike, but it is super important, so I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, be really careful what uh, micro SD card you get with it, um, or get for it. Do not scrimp on it, okay? Don't be tempted to kind of think, oh, I'll get a really cheap one, you know, I'll get a bigger but cheaper one, 128 gigabytes or whatever, um, because you'll have problems, I can guarantee it. So um, the ones I'm using at the moment are, or the, the, the ones that I've used for years and years and years are SanDisk. Um, they do a range of about four or five, building up to, I think, um, sort of Extreme Pro. Uh, it's black, basically. It's like a black and red card. Um, I'll put a link to the card in the description. Um, but don't scrimp on it, basically. Spend as much as you possibly can. I would say um, go for a smaller card, but higher quality, rather than the other way around, because um, 
what you'll find is that uh, the camera will either crash or sometimes it'll just stop recording, really random stuff will happen. And it will be because the card is either not of good quality or it's not fast enough. So um, you don't want to get to the end of your ride and realize that everything's gone or not recorded. So um, yeah, don't scrimp on it. Oh, one other thing, you might have noticed that on the, um, on the Hero 4 that I've got, I'm not using the standard GoPro housing. Um, this is a housing um, that I got. This is a third party company um, that makes these. Um, you can get a GoPro one, but you can get a third party one that's really cheap. It's just if you um, look on Amazon for skeleton housing, again, I'll do a link in the description. Um, this, uh, these are really, really good. Basically what it does is it removes the big kind of ugly case around it. It means you've got access to the ports if you want to sort of plug in um, and put some external power in so you can run these for longer. Um, and it just makes them a little bit easier to use. Now, um, obviously with this on, it's not waterproof. So um, this, the new one is actually, the new uh, Hero 6 and Hero 5 are actually waterproof as, as they are like that, even though they're not in the full case, this isn't. Um, I don't know, I mean, I would say, I don't really wanna be filming in the rain anyway, so it doesn't really bother me, but it's just something to, you know, to look out for. The reason I put it in one of these cases is because, um, it basically removes the, the big plastic outer sort of underwater case. Um, and it basically makes this a lot more, um, uh, makes the lens a little bit clearer, I think. So, and I think it just makes them a little bit easier to use as well. So yeah, these are skeleton cases, you can get them on Amazon. So I hope you've enjoyed this GoPro video. I hope you have learned something. I hope it improves the footage that you get from your GoPros on your bike. I'm gonna put, as I said, the link to all the equipment um, that I've talked about today in the description, so you should find everything there. If you've got any questions, um, feel free to ask me in the comments. And if you like what you see today and you like the other videos, I'm gonna be posting more of these on a regular basis, so feel free to subscribe. And in the meantime, ride safe. <laughs>